two different sides. I was working on one side, and he was working on the other side. And we, you know, we kind of came together. We were working together, and uh, you know, I love I love what Able Ministries was doing. It was just exciting. It was really it lined up with the vision that God had given me for my life, was going into the jails, discipling men, just raising up a generation that's hungry for the things of God. And at that time, I was working. I was working. Uh, we take the city, another ministry in Columbus, and we were work, working on the REACH school. We were getting that started. It was another ministry school. It was just also a six-month school. And I kind of let Joshua know what we were doing. And he loved it. He was like, I think you do that for my business. And I was like, I would love to do that for your business, but, you know, I don't know how we're going to work it out because I got, you know, a full-time job. I got a family. I got, you know. So he's like, all right, let me, let me pray about that. So I guess probably... Maybe a month later, we ended up getting together, talking about it some more. And he, he gave me the expanded vision of the 27 acres, the 100-man transition home. And he says, I definitely feel like we have a place for you. I just don't know exactly when you can start, when it will be available. So he said, are you still on board? And I was like, yes. So we came together. We met again. And this time, he was basically like, are you ready? And I said, yes, I'm ready. And he's like, how soon can you start? So that was kind of like what led up to this. Um, you know, he wanted to do a discipleship school for Able Ministries. So instead of doing the REACH school, we've done something very similar. This is something fresh. This is something that was birthed out of prayer. This is something that was birthed from the Holy Spirit. And it's something specifically tailor-made for Able Ministries. This has never been taught before in this format. So I'm excited to present it to you guys today. Um, I believe that it's not only God's vision, but it's Able Ministries' vision as well. And whether the Bible says where there's no vision, the people perish, right? So the Lord showed me a while back, and I've shared this with you guys before, a prophecy from Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 14. It talks about a day when the world, the entire earth, was going to be filled with the glory of God just as the waters filled the sea. The whole entire earth was going to be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. And I believe this is leading up to the largest end time soul harvest that we've ever seen. Like, it's going to be exponential. Some people are even saying billion soul harvest. Mm -hmm. Like, it's going to be amazing. And God has called us for such a time as this for such a time as this, and he's raising up able ministries, and he's raising up the body of Christ, and he's using he's using schools such as this, discipleship schools, to, to fulfill the great commission. Jesus said that we would what? We would go out into all the nations, that we would make disciples, that we would preach the gospel, that we would baptize, and that we would teach. And discipleship you know, we believe at Able Ministries, discipleship is much more than just a one-time leading somebody to Jesus Christ. It's a, it's a lifetime covenant, and that's what we want to do. We want to disciple men up that are able to, go, to, to raise up and to go out into the world and release the knowledge of the glory of Jesus Christ. And it's very powerful because if you remember back to the book of Exodus, when Moses asked God to show him his glory... Y'all remember what God did? He showed him his goodness. The Bible says his mercy, his goodness passed before him. And in Romans 2, it says what? The goodness of God leads people to repentance. Amen? So what God wants to do is he wants to raise believers up in the image of God, in his very own image, to walk just like his son, to what? To release his glory. His goodness, his goodness into the earth. Yeah. His mercy, his love, his kindness, his forgiveness for the sole purpose of bringing all men to repentance. The Bible says in Peter that God is not slack concerning his promise, that he's long-suffering and he desires that none would perish. And we believe, I believe, and I believe I can speak for the company, we believe that God is tearing because he desires for those souls to come in. And he's waiting. And people are going out right now, even as we speak, into what's called the 1040 window. It's some of the hardest reach places in the world. And people are going in 
I've got a friend that's actually going in and they're setting up 50, 60 churches within a couple weeks' time. Like they're going in and they're coming back out. And there's revival going on in Iran. There's revival going on in China. There's revival going on all throughout the world right now. And we've been called for such a time as this to be a part of this. And that's our desire is to see you guys raised up and be right in the middle of the biggest move of history, the biggest move of God in history. Amen? So, Kingdom Life School is about bringing... Jesus taught the disciples to pray, My will be done on earth as it is in heaven, right? So this is about bringing the kingdom of God from heaven down on earth. When the, when the Pharisees and the religious folks of Jesus' time came to Him and asked when the kingdom was going to come, He told them not to look. He said, look around, look here, look there. He says, the kingdom of God is within you. And if you're in Jesus Christ, if you've accepted Him as Lord, the Holy Spirit has moved in and the kingdom of God has taken up residence inside of you. And now God says, I want to take that kingdom and I want to release it on the earth. I want to release it on the earth. I want to bring... I want to bring freedom to the captives. I want to bring sight to the blind. Those that are lost, I want them to be found, and I want them to come out of darkness and into, into the marvelous light. And he's going to use us to do that. Amen? Amen. So, I'm going to read this letter to you guys. It's just a real short letter from Able Ministries. Um, if you turn past the cover page... <coughs> It says, Dear Kingdom Life students, Able Ministries is very excited about the launch of our very first discipleship school, Kingdom Life. We believe that it's the heart of the Father to restore the identity of His children so that we can receive and walk in all the benefits of His kingdom. We believe that the greatest benefit of the kingdom is a relationship with the Father and that everything else flows out of that place. Our prayer for you is that your intimacy with the Father would increase, that you would know Him like never before, and that you would begin to step into your kingdom calling. This school would be instrumental in leading you into your God-given purpose within His kingdom. We want to encourage you to press into the Lord like never before so that you may receive everything that the Lord has for you in this season. In His love, Chris Cloud, Able Ministries. So we're... We are just excited, man, that, uh, that we've been able to do this. I just want to I want to recognize at this moment, I want to recognize Josh and his wife, Pam, Van Dusseldorf, the owners of Able Ministries. Um, if it weren't for them, this wouldn't have happened. The vision started with them, and everything, as y'all know, when you get a vision, you need provision, right, to make it happen. And they have been providing that, and I just want to, I want to thank them. I praise God for them for just making this available for you guys and everything else that Able Ministries does. If you're not familiar, you can go on our website, ableministries.org, or you can go on our Facebook page and you can kind of get an idea of all the things that we're doing through Able Ministries. It's definitely an exciting season. So just uh, on the introduction page, you'll see um, I got my phone number on there and I also have my, my email on there. I'm available if you guys want to, you know, reach out for, uh, if you have any questions about the school or just want to reach out and chat or whatever, I'm always available. So the overview, um, Josh just asked me to say a couple words. Oh, yeah. You want me to do that? Yeah, come on up. Here, Joe, record me. <coughs> All right. Joshua, because they're recording me, just so you know. All right, guys, I know we've been hard at it this summer. We're coming into the fall. I don't, I don't know if we're going to slow down or not. I know we're tired. I know that sometimes that extra hour of sleep in the morning really does it for us, right? I know a lot of times I'm, I'm asking guys to leave early because, you know, you're in Sharpsburg or Lee's job is gone this morning or the guy's down and you follow you know, and it's not always going to be that way, but sometimes we get into trends, you know, like sleeping a little late, we're sick, we don't feel good. But I believe this. I believe that supernaturally in the spiritual realm, in the kingdom of God, that if we'll show up to this class and, and give it our all, you know, if Chris gives us homework 
do our homework. If he asks us to read something, if we take that little time, that little bit of time extra of our day, I believe that God will supernaturally redeem the time and give us everything we need to accomplish everything else. I mean, I just really believe that. I really do. And, and just listen, I'm not, I'm not bragging or, or trying to puff myself up, but I do a lot of stuff in a day. I do a lot, uh, I do a lot of things in a day, and a lot of people say, well, Josh, you're, my mind doesn't work like you. Not necessarily that I'm smarter, but my mind doesn't work. I can't remember the things like you remember. I can't, I can't do all those things or organize all those things that you do. And I'm here to tell you that it's not me, that God's not a respecter of persons, that the Holy Spirit will teach you all things, and the Holy Spirit will bring all things to your remembrance. So maybe you grew up and your daddy told you you were dumb. Maybe. Maybe, you're, maybe your mom had boyfriends that thumped you in the back of the head, told you you were stupid. Maybe. Maybe that happened. But I'm here to tell you you have a good father. And what he's speaking over you is he's speaking life, and he's speaking wisdom. And the all wisdom comes from God, comes from above. And I'm telling you, it's all in his word. And the beginning of wisdom is to obey the voice of the Lord. And I just believe that God wants us here in this new season Man, he, he wants us to know who we are in Christ, our true identity. He wants us to know that. He doesn't want us to live like we've lived before. And it's not about judgment or holding his thumb down on us. It's about living a better life. Obeying him is not out of some sense of pride that God's sitting on his throne and he's lording over you. He's like, hey, obey my voice because this is what's best for you. And this is where I could bless you at. This is where I could pour out a blessing on you. You don't have room enough to receive it. And I believe God wants to do that. And what does it take? It takes revelation knowledge. It takes vision. It takes the anointed word of God, the rhema word of God, to break through our, st come on, our stubborn, thick skulls. Like we've been doing this all of our lives, right? We've been doing the same thing all of our lives. And sometimes... Man, it just takes some word. It just takes some knowledge. This is what this season is about. Learning who we are in Christ, our true identity, how much he truly loves us, that he's not some high and lifted up, judgmental, wrathful God who wants to just take you out and snuff you out. That he loves you. So I'm just asking, uh, make some commitments. Not to me make a commitment to me, as soon as I let you down, you'll want to let me down, right? Because I'm going to let you down, I'm human, right? I'm going to do something you don't like. I'm going to say something you don't like, right? Amen. So don't make a commitment to me. This ain't about me. Make a commitment to the Lord. I want to sit here. I want to learn. I want to hear this word. Be here every morning. Just be here. Our whole lives, we've been at the wrong place at the wrong time. Come on. Come on. Let's be at the right place at the right time. And I just believe in this season, this is it. For me, too. Like, I'm excited and I'm hungry to learn God's Word and to grow. Man, I'm just hungry. I just want to know more of God. I want to know who He is. I want to know who I am. All those little things that I've been working on. Come on, you know, Josh is this, Josh is that. You know what I'm talking about? All the little things. I want to work those things out in Christ. I want to be delivered from those things. I want to be made new. In Christ. So let's just be on time. Let's be here. I know we get in here at 6. We want to smoke. We want to joke. Whatever. Hey, let's try to get get started as early as possible. I need help with that. Y'all help me out. Come on, guys. I don't need to come wrangle you up. Just get wrangled up. Let's be courteous. I'm sure there's going to be time for answers and questions and opinions. But this is this is a little a different syllabus. This is a little different structure than what we've been used to. I'm sure Chris, he might, if you raise your hand, he might say, just hold it to the end of this chapter. Don't be offended. You know, he's trying to project something. He's trying to get a point across. Keep it to the subject. We're not going to have maybe the same liberty as we've had all this time before. Not to say we're not going to have liberty. Not to say we're not going to be able to ask questions. But be courteous. Stay focused on what we're trying to learn in that season at that time. You know, kind of what I'm really asking you is allow the Holy Spirit to let us all kind of just flow together under unity. Since the Holy Spirit is the spirit of unity, right? Yeah. So there shouldn't be any discord. 
right? Any strife. There shouldn't be any arguments. We love each other, right? What else I got here? Okay, instructors are available by appointment to discuss any questions, biblical counsel, and encouragement. Man, it's great to have a pastor. I know we're working during the day, but he's been bouncing around, hitting you at lunch. He's available. If you want to come in early in the morning, I know we're already early, but if you want to come in earlier, ask him. If you have, man, some of you may maybe weren't raised in church. This might be the first time you've ever cracked open a Bible. Man, that's okay. It may be better for you. Amen. <laughs> right? You may have been a, you may have, you may have some like some of us that were raised in it may have some stinking thinking that we've been taught that isn't right. You know, and I believe this is going to be the anointed word of God. It may be better for you. But if you have any questions, I know there's some epic questions. There's, the Bible can be confusing if you don't read it and know it as a whole. So you might hear something that confuses you. Get with Chris. <laughs> Get with me. Shane has already been through the six-month reach program. Jeff. Jake, some of you guys that have been from the center, that have been in the Word for a year, you know, if you guys don't understand something, come to us. Try Chris first. <laughs> Try him first, you know what I mean? Because he's teaching the class, and if he's teaching something, he'll, he'll probably be, be able to give you the better, best explanation. But let everything be established out of the mouth of two witnesses. You want to ask a couple people, let's get it established, all right? Upon completion... There'll be, uh, a, everyone will receive a certificate upon completion. Maybe I'll put a little gold piping around there for you. Anything else, Chris? Man, I'm excited. Are you guys excited? I feel pretty excited. I feel excited. Be healed, Bobby, in Jesus' name. All right, you're back on recording, dude. I want to say about, about kingdom life and about discipleship. So, you know, Jesus Jesus doesn't just want to be Savior. He wants to be Lord, right? He wants to have, he wants to exercise dominion in our lives and then have that dominion exercised on earth. And that's what it means to be a disciple. The word disciple, it literally means a disciplined follower, right? A disciplined follower. Well, Jesus said, if you love me, you'll what? Keep my commandments. You'll keep my commandments. Well, what are his commandments? Love. Love God with all your heart, your soul, and your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. Those are the two commandments. The entire law is fulfilled in those two commandments. And that's what God's calling us to do. You know, and I feel like this, this word's been coming up a lot, and, you know, I'll just say it again. Um, this is a season of no compromise. And we keep seeing it like time and time again. People keep making these decisions. And, you know, the judgment of God is already established. Like, he's not sitting up there waiting for you to mess up so he can pronounce judgment over you. The lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. The wages of sin is death. Yes, there's, there's been grace and, gosh, we've made it. And I say we because I've, I've done some dumb things. I've said some dumb things. And, you know, God has brought us this far. But I feel like stepping into this season, stepping into a new season, we just have to be more aware. More aware. And sometimes I've noticed when you begin to step into, deeper into the things of God, sometimes judgment will begin to come really quick. You know, the enemy, the enemy hates this. The enemy hates what we're doing. He hates discipleship. He hates it when people get saved. He really hates discipleship. He really hates when we, we get saved and then we begin to step into sonship. That's what he really hates. Why? Because when we step into sonship, there's an anointing. And the anointing is what God releases to set the captives free. Right? And Jesus received an anointing greater than his companions because he chose to love righteousness and hate lawlessness. He just drew that line and he said, 
I'm doing it God's way. And I feel like that's what God's calling us to do. I really do. You know, and there's grace and there's mercy available, but why not just come all the way in? Come all the way in. You know, I always, I told some people, we went to the jail yesterday, you know, I went, we went over to, I went over to Russell County later on, and I told the guys, like, my, my best thinking cost me 15 years in prison. And I found myself looking at a 50-year sentence, and finally he got through my thick skull, like Josh was saying, and finally I realized that my way wasn't working. And I was like, why not try his way? What do I have to lose? Like, I've tried it my way again and again and again and again and kept finding myself in, in worse situations. You know, um, just as we can go from glory to glory in the kingdom, we can go from glory to glory in the opposite direction, right? So Jesus is calling us to step all the way in. That's what a disciple is. That's what a disciple is. It's a disciplined follower. And if you really want to see God's word effective in your life, then you've got, to, you've got to come all the way in. You've got to come all the way in. Jesus loved righteousness. He hated lawlessness. In John 3, chapter 3, verse 34, it says, He only spoke the words of the Father. When we only speak the words of the Father, man, the Father releases the Holy Spirit to attend to those words. He releases His Spirit to go out and the Bible says when his word goes forth it will it will what? It will not return Very void. Boring. So when I a lot of y'all know my story, I did 15 years in prison. Um, I just made a decision when I got arrested. I wasn't gonna do it my way anymore. Like I just said, I was gonna go all the way out for the kingdom. And I just began to start seeking him, seeking his face, seeking his ways, seeking his word. Of course there was different seasons of growing in the Lord. Right? Well, when I came home, when I was released, I noticed that in a lot of the churches that I, that I visited, it seemed like the Bible says that the gates of hell wouldn't prevail against the church, right? It seemed like the opposite was actually happening. There was a lot of sickness. There was a lot of disease. There was a lot of people that, that weren't walking in love. There was a lot of people that weren't walking in the Spirit. And it really just seemed like people were, were allowing the enemy to lead them versus allowing the Holy Spirit to lead them, right? So that's one of the reasons why kingdom life was birthed. Let's, let's turn over to Matthew 16. And really this is more of an inter introductory day, right? I don't think we'll, we'll actually get into the syllabus today because of time reasons, but this is more of an introduction. We just wanted to introduce to y'all what kingdom life was all about and uh, just really set the stage for this six-month school that we're starting. So Matthew 16, let's start around verse 13. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, who do men say that I am? And they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered him and said, you are Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. And also I say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And I will give to you the, kings of the, the keys of the kingdom, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So this is powerful. So... Jesus, in his word, this word is full of answers, right? Every answer we need can be found in this word. There's things in our life that might be more specific, detailed-oriented, and then the Holy Spirit will reveal them to us, but most of the problems that we'll face in life, we will see in the word of God. 
go to the Word of God. It's full of answers. So, the Lord showed me in His Word one of the reasons why the gates of hell were, were seemed like they were prevailing and the church wasn't prevailing against the gates of hell. And it was because the church was not building correctly. The church was not being built correctly. Jesus said in Matthew 16, in the passage that we just read, He said that my church will be built on what? The revelation of who I am. Psalms chapter 127 verse 1 says, Unless the Lord builds the house, those who labor, labor in vain. Right? So the Lord wants to build. Jesus Christ is the one who builds His church. And He builds His church through the Word of God. And right here He says He builds it through what? Through revelation. What does how do we how does the church receive revelation? The word, the word, the anointing, the, anointing, the, the prophets, Holy Spirit, prophecies, prophecies, dreams, visions. Amen. So when we begin to get in this word, and we begin to spend time in relationship, <laughs> the Holy Spirit will begin to illuminate this word. Mm-hmm. We'll begin to bring this word to life. Right? And he says, when you when you build, when you allow me to build you on the revelation of who I am, he says, the gates of hell will not prevail against you. The gates of hell will not prevail against you. In other words, that's a picture of the church walking in their dominion, walking in their authority, walking in their identity. And nothing that stands in their way can stop it. Nothing that stands in our way can stop us. Right? Luke 10, 19, Jesus says, I give you power over scorpions. Right? And it's talking about spiritual things. And he says, and nothing by no means shall hurt you. Nothing shall hurt you. So he's given us this authority and power. And really, we're going to begin to, when we start diving into the syllabus, we're going to really start looking at the authority of the believer, the identity of the believer, the dominion that we have. About six till. Six till? Okay. We're going to start looking at the dominion, the authority, everything that Christ has given us as a church, right? And he says when we get this, man, we'll be able to really, really make some impact for the kingdom of God. And that's what kingdom life is all about, making impact for God's kingdom. (coughs) Seeing souls lost. Seeing sons and daughters of God rising up in their identity and making a change in this world. So right after that, after he says, I'm going to build my church on the revelation of who I am, he says, whatever you what bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So this is a picture of our kingdom identity and our kingdom authority as sons to be able to bind and to loose and to have the Holy Spirit and all of heaven backing us on every single thing that we do. Every single thing that we do. Now this is a this is a person who is walking in the things of God, who has made that choice to become a disciplined follower, not not necessarily doing it my way, because God isn't going to back me if I'm doing it my way, if I'm, if I'm teaching my words, my ways, my will. That's not going to work. That's not going to cut it. Amen? So, let's look at Ephesians 5. This will probably be the last thing we look at. Excuse me, Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Starting around verse 7. Isn't it interesting, just a, just a thought while y'all are turning to uh, Ephesians 4. Isn't it interesting how a lot of people, you hear this in the church a lot, like, I'm just waiting on God. I'm waiting on Him. I'm waiting on Him. But have you have you prayed? Have you declared His Word? The Bible says, whatever you bind on earth, whatever you loose on earth, <laughs> I'm just waiting on God to move. He'll just do whatever He wants to do. No, you have. we have a part to play. We have a part to play. Now, sometimes our timing doesn't line up. Sometimes his timing's a little bit different. And a lot of times he's just waiting on us to get out of the way, to be honest with you. <laughs> he's waiting on us to get in a position 
where we're ready to receive that blessing, where we can be a good steward over it. Amen? So, Ephesians 4, starting around verse 7, it says, But to each one of us grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Now this, he ascended, what does it mean but that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is also the one who ascended far above the heavens, that he might fill all things. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. And brothers, there's people sitting here today that are going to fall into these, these giftings. There's, there's pastors here. There's evangelists here. There's prophets here. There's, there's those that are called to be apostles. That, didn't, that did not die out with the early church. These things were given to establish the church. These things were given to establish the church. For what reasons? Verse 12, For the equipping of the saints, for the works of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith. It's so important. Joshua spoke about that earlier, that we come together in unity. First and foremost, we want to be in unity with our Father. Right? And then we want to be in unity. If we're in a local congregation, we want to be submitted to our pastor. And then it comes down the line. We want to be in unity with our brotherhood. You know, with the, with the brothers and sisters in Christ. And that's where Psalm 133, that's where the blessing is. That's where the anointing is. That's where the power is. Unity. Coming together in unity. Being a part of what God's saying and what He's doing. So we all come to the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. What did God say in Habakkuk chapter 2? He says, prior to my return... I'm going to fill the entire earth with the knowledge of my glory. I'm going to fill the entire earth with it. And he's doing it through his body. Right? The purpose of the fivefold ministry is to get us in a position where we can receive the knowledge of who God is. And that's one of the things we, we opened up with our letter. That's what we desire, that you guys enter into these seasons, the season of intimacy where you begin to know Him. He begins to reveal Himself to you in a radical way like never before. Like never before. If you, if you can really get to know Him, He's not a judgmental God. He's not sitting in heaven waiting to throw a lightning bolt at you every time you make a mistake. Right? He desires that none would perish. He's a good father and he loves us and he wants the best for us. And we need to understand that we are created in his image. When we see God as a judgmental God, guess what? We're going to see ourselves that way and then we're going to see our brother that way. And every time our brother makes a mistake, we're going to want to blast him down. Or like Josh said, maybe come up and thump him behind, the, behind their ear on the back of the head or you know, tell them they're stupid or tell them they're dumb. You know, And God's not like that. And God's not like that. And we begin to see the love of the Father. And then we see ourselves created in our image. And we can, we can walk in that same love and that same compassion and that same mercy that he, that he has. Now, will it happen overnight? Most of the time it doesn't. It's a process. We have to grow in that love. But the love of God, the Bible said, has already been shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit. It's there. Now we just have to develop it and we have to practice it and walk it out. Amen? So, the purpose of the fivefold ministry is to build us up to the unity of faith, to the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man. To a perfect man. God is calling us to see ourselves in a different manner. He's calling us to see ourselves as the righteousness of God in Christ and to be spiritually mature. Right? I believe if you make a tree good, you make the fruit good. If I, if I were to go out to the jail when I go to the jails every week and just tell these guys they're just a bunch of dumb sinners and they're never going to be amount to anything, then that's probably what would happen. They'd say, oh, crap, this guy just doesn't really believe in me. God must not believe in me, so I'm not going to believe in myself and just keep that same pattern going. 
But when you tell somebody that you're that we serve a good Father and He loves you and He has a perfect purpose for you and a plan for you, and that you're the righteousness of God in Christ, then you can begin to see a transformation and people will begin to step into that identity. So, watch this. To a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. This is the purpose of the fivefold ministry. This is the purpose of kingdom life. It's to see sons and daughters rise up in their identity in Christ to the measure of the stature and fullness of Christ. To walk like Jesus. To talk like Him. To try to think like Him. The Bible says that we already have the mind of Christ. Like it already belongs to us. Right? It's already available. The wisdom of God is already available for us. And we need it. We need the wisdom of God. We need the wisdom of God for every situation as a businessman, as an employee, as a husband. We need the wisdom of God. So this is going to be this is going to be an exciting season. This is just an introduction. But the vision is just to see see you guys raise up as an army. You know, not just as able ministries, but going out um, individually in, the, in, in your jobs, in the workplace, in the marketplace, um, wherever you go, back home with your families, and just demonstrate the love of God. Demonstrate the love of God. It's all about, it's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. It's all about pointing to His kingdom, right? The Bible says that, that the Lord follows His word with what? He confirms it with what? Signs, Right? Signs aren't to point to us. When God, God might use us to do a sign, God might use us to pray for someone and the Holy Spirit will heal them or to give a word of knowledge. Or we might, some of us, we studied this the other day, some of us are living, the Bible says we're living memorials. So some of us are a sign. People know where we used to be and they see us today, but it's not a sign pointing to ourselves. How great we are and look what we did and self-made, no. It's a sign that points to the king and says, look what Jesus did. Look how good our Father is. Look how much He loves us. And if He did it for me, He'll do it for you. Like Josh said, He's not a respecter of person. Amen? So we love you guys. You can go ahead and cut that off, brother.